Hello everyone, this is WTMJ, World Teaching Ministry of Jesus, Get Understanding Broadcast. I am Pastor Pierre Roman Eliassin, and with me, I am Pastor Eddie LaRoque, and we welcome you back once again. You know that you can always reach us at 888-434-WTMJ. That's 888-434-9865. Please send us your letters, your correspondence, your financial support for the ministry to PO Box 642 in Holbrook, New York, 11741. Yes. As you know, WTMJ Get Understanding Broadcast is a biblical teaching presented in full context and according to its historical setting as we rightly dividing the word of truth. We're going to start our broadcast with prayer, with Pastor Eddie. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this amazing opportunity to come before you once more and to teach your word. We are asking you for greater understanding because with all of our getting, you ask us to get understanding. Jesus, in your mighty name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in. Thank you for being focused. Thank you for all you have done to make sure you stay focused in that wonderful teaching, WTMG, Get Understanding. Our subject for today, as you know, is we shall be judged. Yes. But we have two objectives for our teaching today. What are the Pastor Eddie? Objective number one is what is judgment? And number two is what are the different types of judgment? So by the end of this, yes, we are going to know the answers for both. Yes. Okay. We want to do a little summary in what we studied last time jesus paid all part two we studied last time the difference pastor Eddie, between sin iniquity and transgression that's right mm -hmm. so pastor Eddie, what are they a recap yes sin is to miss the mark there we go okay so that's not necessarily just bad things that we do and it includes mm -hmm. good things that we do, but then we stop doing them. Very good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Number two, premeditated sin is iniquity. Iniquity is premeditated sin. Okay. So this is something you think about, you plan to do. That's so right. call that iniquity. Mm -hmm. Yes. And three, we looked at transgression. And we said that transgression is intentionally disobeying. Okay. Here we go. As Pastor Eddie said very clearly, there is a difference between just the regular sin, miss the mark, iniquity, something you plan, you think, and transgression, you know, and you do it anyway. Right. But Pastor Eddie, did Jesus die for all of them? Jesus died for it all. So what we read in Isaiah 53 verse 5 mm -hmm. is the following. He was wounded for our transgressions. Amen. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. I want you to really pay attention to this verse. Jesus was wounded for our transgressions. And we just give you the definition of transgressions. Jesus was bruised for our iniquities. So when we say Jesus paid all, Jesus really, truly died for all our sins. And I want you to know, whatever you're going through, whatever you did in the past, whatever you're doing now, I am telling you, you can come to him and ask back, as dirty your life was or is today, if you come to him right now, 
The Bible said the word of God. Not denomination. Not your feeling. Not someone talking to you. We're talking about what the word of the living God said. In Isaiah 1 verse 18. It says, come now. Come now. And let us reason together. Amen. Say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, Amen. they shall be as white as snow. Remember, Pastor D, fit is now. It is now. So come now. Come to him what now? And ask him to forgive whatever sins you have been committed before. Or maybe just committed what now? But if you come with a repentant heart, you want to change your mind toward him. I promise you, by the power of the word of God, he will accept you as you are. Amen. Amen? Because 2,000 years ago, he paid all. The second part of what we did last time was, Pastor Eddie, mm -hmm. the title was... We talked about the unpardonable sin. Mm -hmm. The unpardonable sin today is the state of continued, Pastor Pierre, mm -hmm. unbelief. Yes. The Holy Spirit currently convicts the unsaved world mm -hmm. of sin. Yes. Righteousness and judgment according to John 16, verse 8. Yes. So therefore, my friend, to resist mm -hmm. that conviction mm -hmm. and willfully remain unrepented, in that case, there is no pardon. Either in this age or in the age to come. For a person who rejects the, sin, the spirit prompting mm -hmm. to trust in Jesus Christ and then die in unbelief, that person will never find any forgiveness. So let us close our summary. As we said last time, there is the love of God who is evident. And, there is a, and the choice, Pastor Eddie, is crystal clear. That's right. So we look at John 3.16. And this is what it says. Everyone knows this. Amen. For God so loved the world mm -hmm. that he gave his one and only son that whoever, whoever believes Amen. in him shall not perish but have eternal life that is the love of god yes. who is clearly evident to anyone yes and then the choice is clear mm -hmm. the same book the same chapter john 3 16 let's go all the way down to john 3 36 and the word of god said whoever believes in the son mm -hmm. has has eternal life yes. present tense has eternal life but but whoever rejects the son will not see life mm -hmm. for god's wrath remains on him so the choice is clear yes Pastor Eddie, if you believe you receive eternal life if you reject jesus there is nothing god can do for you amen mm -hmm. all right so that was our summary for last broadcast but we asked a question last time pastor Eddie. yes we had our trivia question yes and we said should we be judged for our sins should we be judged for our sins yes that was we, the question we do want to thank everyone who participated because we have a lot more people yes more people are participating yes. and we're thank glad God. for that amen so what's the answer sure a question be judged for his or her sin the answer is absolutely 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 no no absolutely no an emphatic no ah in the world pastor if jesus paid all and i have to pay something as small as it can be, no way. Either Jesus paid all or he did not. But thank be to God, Jesus 
according to the word of the living God Almighty, the uncompromising word of God, the absolute truth, Jesus paid all. So no, no, and no, you will not pay not one sin before God. So, so let's, let's recap. Mm -hmm. Let's recap the great exchange and what that is. Amen. Okay. So Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Amen. He paid the price for your sins. That was supposed to have been you on the cross. Mm -hmm. But because Jesus, who lived a perfect life, put his perfect life on you, the exchange was yes. Yes. that he took your sins mm -hmm. and because of that, God the Father who is love Amen. and God who is also a just God punished him Amen. in Amen. your place Amen. for your sins. Hallelujah. So he took your sins, although he never sinned. He lived a perfect life and he took the perfect life that he lived and he gave it to you. Here we go. So because God is a just God, has already punished Amen. Jesus. Praise the Lord. For you, Amen. for your sins, mm -hmm. he then cannot punish you now for what has already been paid. Hallelujah. The great exchange. And we thank God oh, for this. I great hope exchange. you truly understand what Pastor Eddie just displayed. For you to come to God, you must be perfect. None of us can. No more, none of us will be. Yes. And that's the reason Jesus came. That's why you need a Savior. Amen. So therefore, He took all your sins past, present, and future, put it on himself, he become sin, Pastor Eddie. I think we have a yes. CD we're going to, to uh, put, out. Put, put out, talking about justification. Mm -hmm. The Jewish part. Yes. The Bible said, he become sin. He was not a sinner. He become. So when God became, when Jesus became sin, so you can become the righteousness of God. Oh, stay tuned because we're going to talk to you about that CD when we have it. Okay, let us study now our teaching for today. We shall be judged. We shall be judged. It is one of many doctrines mm -hmm. so many Christians misunderstand, Pastor Pierre. Yes. Okay. We have two clear scriptures. In the New Testament that indicate that yes believers will be judged mm. what? <laughs> you just said we're not going to be judged I and you did. just said there's two mm -hmm. passages in the Bible who prove clearly that believers you and I who believe in Christ will be judged are what you is what is that it is, it is a contradiction what, what are you talking about this is why my brothers and sisters, my friend, when you are studying the Word of God, you have to study the Word of God in context. You have to truly, rightly divide in the Word of God. Yes. So let us first read those two passages who said clearly that Christian believers in Christ Jesus will be judged. Okay, so let's look at the first, mm -hmm. Romans 14. Verses 10 through 12. Yes. Why do you judge your brother? Mm -hmm. Or why do you show contempt for your brother? Mm -hmm. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Here we go. For it is written, as I live, mm -hmm. says the Lord, every knee, every knee shall bow to me. Yes. And every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us shall give account of himself. To God. Remember, we said rightly dividing the word of truth. So the first verse who said Christian will be judged is Romans chapter 14, verse 10 to 12. But pay attention to those words. For we shall all stand before the judgment seat 
of Christ. Remember that. Pay attention with that. The second passage, passage, pass, 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 Second Corinthians mm -hmm. five verse ten says, "Yes, for we must all appear before the judgment seat we go. of Christ, that each one mm -hmm. may receive what is due mm -hmm. him for the things done while in the body. That's right here on earth, on earth. Mm -hmm. whether good or bad." Again, pay attention to those words in Second Corinthians chapter five verse ten. Before the judgment seat of Christ. We come back to that. So, it is clear that both scriptures are referring to Christians, not unbelievers. Pastor Eddie, mm -hmm. a lot of people panic. Panic. Let me tell you something. You don't have to. You don't have to be scared. You don't have to be panic. Stop. Why? Let us study the word of God. Let us widely divide the word of God. Mm -hmm. So, Pastor Eddie, when we say the word judgment, mm -hmm. what does the word judgment mean? Judgment is a formal decision mm -hmm. made and to be bound to a particular outcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, the way a thing turns out. Yes, that's what I would call it. Is mm -hmm. the outcome. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Judgment must be fair. Mm. But we are living on earth. When we're talking about judgment on earth, per se, the mm, allowed bias, allowed mm. injustice. Yes. But we're not talking about judgment according to mankind. And thank goodness for that. Amen. All right. Therefore, this is where we need to focus. You should have your pen. You should have your notebook because Take we go, I'm go, I'm, you're going to be blown out by the truth revelation of God. According to the word of the living God Almighty, from the first book, Genesis, to the last revelation, 66 books, we have seven separate judgment revealed in the Bible. What are the past All right, so let us start the countdown. Mm -hmm. Number one, we have the judgment of sin. Okay. Number two, we have the judgment of self. Mm. Number three, we have the judgment of good works. Okay. Number four, the judgment of the nations. There we go. Number five, mm -hmm. the judgment of Israel. Wow. Number six, the judgment of the fallen angels. Mm -hmm. And number seven, lastly, the judgment of the wicked. Here we go. Seven judgment. Pastor Eddie just displayed all of them for us. All seven judgment have one thing in common. What it is, Pastor Eddie? The Lord Jesus Christ is the one and only supreme judge. Listen, you know we are WTMJ. World Teaching Ministry of Jesus. And our broadcast is Get Understanding. So we cannot just say something like that. We need to prove it from the word of God. Of so can we course. prove that, Pastor Andy? Because we said everyone from Adam to the last person born will stand before God to be judged. But you just said Jesus Christ is the supreme judge. Yes. Can you prove that to us? Let's go to John mm -hmm. chapter 5, verse 22. Here we go. The Father judges no one. Say it again. The Father judges no one. No, no. Can we say it again? The Father judges no one. Here we go. But has entrusted all judgment to the Son. Do you have the Son? Do you have the Supreme Court in your corner? Do you have the Supreme Court on your side? That's why you need Jesus. The Father judged no one. no one, but has trusted all judgment mm -hmm. to the Son, according to John chapter 5, verse 22. Let's go back to our seven judgment because we need to really get you understand that. Do you know in those seven judgments, Pastor Eddie? Yes. Four of those are not. Four in those seven judgments, 
four of those judgments are not for Christians. What are the pastor Eddie? So those four, the judgment of nations. Number one. The judgment of Israel. Number two. The judgment of the fallen angels. Number three. And the judgment of the wicked are not for believers. So therefore, if they if we know we have seven judgment, focus with me, and in those seven judgment, four of them are not for us. In that case, Pastor the seven minus four. How many left? Basic arithmetic, right? <laughs> we have three left. Yes. That we can look at. In bed. But, you know, we were talking. Mm -hmm. And we've made this point before. Yes. When we are studying the word, when we're studying the Bible, it is important that we look at the audience Amen. to whom this Amen. particular narrative is directed. Hallelujah. To. Yes. Who is the author talking to? Mm -hmm. That's important. So that we are rightly dividing the word of truth. Amen. So we said seven judgment, four of them are not for us. So we have only three left. Those three passages, number one is? Numero uno. <laughs> Spanish. The judgment of sin. Number, number two, two. The judgment of self. And number three? Number three, the judgment of good works. Let's go to number one. All right, let's do that. Judgment of sin. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. Yes. More than 2,000 years ago. Yes. At Calvary Cross, Jesus Christ paid all. So the judgment of sin, per se, is? It's a done deal. We are done with that. We're we not scared Amen. of that. Hallelujah. Remember, seven judgment. Four of them are not for us. Three left. Three left. In those three, one already done. Judgment of sins. So now we have two left. Judgment of self. And the judgment for good work. So let's go and talk about the judgment of self, Pastor mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's do that. The judgment of self in 1 Corinthians 11, mm -hmm. verses 31 and 32. Yes. We read the following. For if we would judge ourselves, Amen. we would not be judged. Amen. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord. Yes. That we may not be condemned with the world. We are his beloved children. Yes. We are special. Yes. We are special. So, my friend, in this verse, we find out there are two different Greek words for judging. Number one is the word diakrino. D-I-A-K-R-I-N-O. Diakrino. And diakrino means to discern. And the second Greek word is Crino, K R I N O, and the word Crino is our action, judge, and discipline measure how to correct us. It's a good thing. It's bad. Pastor you are a mother. Yes, I am. I am a father. Yes, you are. You love your children. Yeah. I love my children. In that case, Pastor when you discipline them, you discipline them for them to be better. That's correct. We discipline, we correct. Amen. For the purpose of seeing an improvement. Amen. And Pastor God love our children. God love us as his children. Therefore, he will not let us do whatever we want. He will correct us. Yes. But you correct your children, I correct my children in love. That's right. So, the word of God. The word of God. Hebrews. Amen. 12. Yes. Verses 5 and 6. Yes. My son, do not make light mm -hmm. of the Lord's discipline. Discipline. 
not punishment. Pay attention. My son, my daughter, do not make light of the Lord discipline. We know discipline is that easy. Yeah. We know discipline is not something you take like excited. Mm -hmm. Even if someone said to you, Pastor Eddie, in law, to correct you about something, it's still like, you know, the human part is not like, oh, I accept it like that. But it's a punishment. My son, do not make light of the Lord discipline. And do not lose heart when he rebukes Amen. you. Amen. Do not Amen. lose heart when he rebukes you because the Lord disciplines mm -hmm. the one he loves. And he chastens everyone Hallelujah. he accepts as his son. True love demands discipline. Yes. If you love your children, you discipline them. If I love my children, I discipline them. Okay? We're not talking about wood punishment. We're talking about wood discipline. That discipline, Pastor Eddie, is what? Or is not what? What it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not to be confused with cold-hearted punishment, which is what I think we think Ooh. of when we hear that word. Oh, no, 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 Pastor Eddie, I think you have to say that again. What is God discipline is not? God's discipline is not to be confused, Pastor Pierre, with cold-hearted punishment, which is the real fear. The real wow. fear is, oh, I am going to be punished and it's going to be this horrible sentence. No. No way. My heavenly father will discipline me, will correct me, but not punish me. I'm going to prove that to you, my brothers and sisters. Jesus came to portray God himself as a father. I am a father. I want you to understand that verse just I just think about that verse Pastor Eddie Matthew chapter 7 verse 11 mm -hmm. yes when the word of God said if you be evil know how to give good gift to your children yes. are much more God Please, I want you to really always remember that verse. And it is so easy. 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven, Matthew, 7-Eleven. Every time you go to a 7-Eleven, remember that verse. 7-Eleven, Matthew, chapter 7, verse 11. If you, being evil, know how to give good gift to your children, how much more God? How much Pastor more? Eddie. Absolutely. How much more God? So when we're thinking about Oof. what we're studying, discipline, God, we want God to discipline us. Amen. Because Hallelujah. he loves us so. Amen. Hallelujah. And he always do so with his word. Yes. Yes. Pastor. God uses the analogy of father and son mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because we understand it, yes right yes we, we get that yes he compares himself to a loving father mm -hmm. who not only blesses mm -hmm. but also disciplines Amen. his beloved children for their own good pastor do what now as you are disciplining your children as i'm disciplining my children they may not understand it but when they grow they will say thank you mommy thank you daddy so proper discipline is a proof of love. That's right. So, don't feel bad when you discipline your mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. Discipline them because you do love them. Yes. Hallelujah. The discipline is a response of his agape love. Agape love. His agape love. And you know, the agape love, I said, is the unconditional love. Love you without any merit, everything God does. I love God. It's through out his heart, through his grace. God loves me, just he loves me. He loves you. He loves me, just he loves me. Not because I have done anything for him to love me. But he loves me, just he loves me. But because of safety, he loves me. Mm -hmm. In response of his love, yes. being grateful to his love, yes. I will 
give everything to him. I will live my life the best to please Amen. my father. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So the result of his discipline is stronger faith. That's right. As we read in John in James mm -hmm. chapter 1, verse 2, the Lord discipline works for our good on good mm -hmm. that he might be glorified with our lives. That's so beautiful. The same way when you are disciplined, your children. And you see them doing well, you are satisfied. But discipline is not punishment. This is why we need to focus on the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Why? Because sometimes when things go down, Pastor Eddie, mm -hmm. you will need to pick yourself up. Yes. Yes. You must pick yourself back up. Keep your eyes on Jesus because that gives you the strength Amen. to pick yourself back up and keep fighting the good fight of faith. And knowing the love of God, Pastor Eddie. Amen. And the, the cross is the demonstration of God's love. Pastor Eddie. We don't want to stay too long because we want you to really understand that teaching. We're going slow, but we really want you to get it. The cross, Pastor Eddie, is a symbol mm -hmm. of the love and the justice of God. Yes. Let me say it again. The cross is a symbol of the love and the justice of God. The love of God is so love us. The justice of God, he gave his only begotten son. Sins must be punished. But God loved me so much. He sent Jesus Christ to be punished for me, for my sins. So when we say, my friend, all your sin has been paid, God did not just save you out of his good heart and then forget about No, 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 no. God is a judge, Pastor Sadie. He's a just God. He's a just God. Yes. So if you sin, your sin must be punished. But now, how is going to punish them? Mm -hmm. If you accept Jesus, Jesus pay them for you. But if you do not accept Jesus, you sin against the eternal God. You will pay the eternal consequences. This is why it is a must to have Jesus. So when we're talking about we shall be judged, remember, it is not about sins at all. That's right. Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary paid in full, in full, Amen. the penalty of all of our sins. Amen. Please That's the that. past Praise sins. The Lord. That's the present sins. Mm -hmm. That's the future sins that have not yet been committed. Amen. Therefore, the Holy One of Israel, the loving and just God, Amen. forgives and gives eternal life mm -hmm. to whoever believes in Jesus' finished work. Here we go. My friend, remember, Jesus paid all. There's the author who writes something, Pastor Eddie. His name is R.A. Torre. Mm -hmm. Can you read that for me, please? Yes, absolutely. When Jesus died, he died as my representative. Please, I want you to really, I'm sorry, Pastor Eddie, pay attention to those words. Pay attention to those words. If you can write them down, pause the video, write them down. Go ahead, Pastor Eddie. Start all over I'm again. I'm going to mm -hmm. say it slowly yes so that you can let it yes marinate really absorb the words and marinate uh in those words yes. when jesus died he died as my representative amen and i died in him hmm. when he rose amen. he rose as my representative and i rose in him Ooh. when he ascended as my representative. Yes. And I ascended Ooh. in him. him. Uh, Hallelujah. And today, I am seated in Christ 
with God Hallelujah. in the heavenliest. Yes. I look at the cross of Christ and I know that atonement has been made for my sins. All my sins. I look at the open sepulcher mm -hmm. and the risen and ascended Lord. Hallelujah. And I know the atonement has been accepted. Hallelujah. There no longer remains a single sin on me. Not a single sin on you. No matter how many Ooh. or how great my sins have been. I hope you pause that video. You write down every word. My brothers and sisters, if we say, according to the word of God, we have no sin, we are a liar. The truth is not in us. What is talking about? As we are living daily, we sin. That's why we have to go to our Father and ask for forgiveness. That is only the break, the breakup of the fellowship. Yes. But my friend, that's why you have to go back to our videos and check out the video on repentance, forgiveness, pain or part one, part two. You will have the whole picture. But as Pastor Eddie said, I'm going to read that for you. When Jesus died, he died as my representative. And I, Pastor Eddie, died in him. When Jesus was, he was as my representative and I was in him. When he ascended as my representative and I ascended in him. Pastor Eddie, today, according to the word of God, I am sitting in Christ with God in the heavens. I don't see you sitting in heaven. My friend, that, the word, that position though. That's why you have to check out our new series we're going to really soon it's coming it's coming we're going to have a great city on judgment not judgment i'm sorry justification sanctification and glorification my brothers and sisters you need to take the word of god seriously what god said is yes and amen we need to close my friend i look at the cross of christ and I know that atonement has been made for all my sins. I look at the open sepulchre and the risen and ascending Lord. And I know the atonement has been accepted, Pastor A.T. Therefore, before God, positionally, there no longer remain a single sin on me, no matter how many or how great my sins have been. And that's what we've been saying for a majority of this teaching. Hallelujah. The word was written for believers. Amen. This is a love letter from God Amen. to us. We take God at his word. Amen. So believe what he tells you when he tells you. When you accept Jesus, Hallelujah. you are blameless before God the Father. Amen. You are blameless. You have no sin on you. Take him at his word. Amen. It is not about how you feel. It's not about what you think or believe. Amen. It is simply about what God says to you. We have to close. We will continue our teaching next time. I want you to stay tuned. Send us questions. There is no question for next time because it is a continuity. Thank you for being faithful to WTMJ Get Understanding Broadcast. Pastor is going to pray for us to close our broadcast. We're making just one request, mm -hmm. and the request is that when you listen, you subscribe. Yes, please. And you subscribe and you share. Yes. We thank you so much. Yes. Let's go into prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your amazing love. 
we thank you for Jesus in particular. He has redeemed us and we have no sin upon us. Father, when you look at us, we are blameless. We are blameless and you see us in the same way as you see Jesus is how you see us. Thank you for the gift of Jesus. In his mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.